Welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Tomasz Foldy. Uh, actually, I'm a new guy here. Uh, recently moved. Why it's uh, why it's underlined? It's not bad. It's just so I'm working for a, a consultancy company. Actually, it's happened to be my company. It's a very small one. We have 200 people, uh, mostly in Europe. And we're working with the best clients of the world. So we're working for Facebook, we work for Netflix, Apple, Exxon, uh, and, and it's so cool. So whenever we have, I mean, after a while, the biggest tableau uh, server uh, deployments, administrators and users just find us, drive some uh, value, uh, drive some uh, business for us, and we have tons of money. What is more interesting, <laughs> um, yeah. So it is more interesting that we have uh, other clients like Tableau and Mapbox, which means that uh, we are not just Tableau partners. Everyone can be a Tableau partner. You pay like 3,000, sign up some forms that you will sell a lot of uh, licenses. But to have Tableau as a customer, you really have to work a lot. And we did. So Tableau actually paying for us for uh, Tableau server for, uh, feature development. So we have access to their developers. Uh, they are not uh, hiding uh, from us. We have access to their source code, so we can build a lot of uh, crazy stuff, and actually we are doing a lot of crazy stuff. Same for Mapbox, and we also uh, work on other vendors, and uh, we also started to work on extensions like a year ago. So we were one of the first who uh, started to work together with Tableau's um, uh, extension product team, it's the extensibility team. And uh, finally, in a very short period of time, Tableau just came up with these extension features. Going back to, uh, to my company, uh, this handsome guy is me. So again, I'm Hungarian. Uh, I uh, born and raised there. And this is the moment when I was just recognized by our, uh, uh, in our parliament by our government who are corrupt and stealing money from us. <laughs> <laughs> so that we were the most innovative companies in Hungary in, two, uh, in uh, 2016, which is not really a great deal because it's a small company, 10 million people, so uh, to be you know, top on something, it's not that hard, but still, it's good. Now, one month ago, I moved to the States, so I tried to be as, more, as, uh, as American as possible, so that's my uh, house, that's my F-150. <laughs> And uh, when I just rented the house, it came with the US flag, and I still don't know if I have to leave it, or uh, because I'm not an American, but I just don't know if you will leave. So I have a flag, a big house, and a big house, so I'm, I'm almost American. Uh, now, what are extensions? So that's the question. Uh, only uh, one guy from here is actually Burton. Extensions. So extensions are just web applications uh, which can communicate with uh, Tableau in, uh, in a bidirectional way. So what does it mean? It means that you can put applications into Tableau dashboards which can take the data out, which can take uh, filter selections, user interactions, interpret it, and also change the dashboards itself. So in other words, you can have your code uh, with, uh, fully integrated inside the dashboard. Why it's so cool? First, Power BI has it like a year ago, so Tableau has to have it as well. But this is not the biggest driver, I guess. Uh, the biggest driver is because everyone was like, Why are, where are our send keys? So we want to have send keys and not for a visualization or Tableau in a more easier way. Everyone was like, okay, we need to do some write back. I want to integrate my dashboards with my ERP, CRM systems. I want to change the numbers because uh, I'm seeing my dashboard and that number is bad and I want to change it before my manager just realized that I'm not really progressing well. So write back has some very interesting use cases. Parameter management, everyone wants to have dynamic parameters in some point in their, in their life, uh, some, you know, uh, since I, I just had a conversation uh, in the, the break and the first question was how can we have a date selector which always shows the current date when I open my, root, uh, my, my dashboard and extensions can also solve these issues. Data export is uh, equals to Excel export and nobody wants Excel export in Tableau's opinion 
because it's a visual tool. You have to keep the data inside. If you move things out, especially in Excel, you just ruin the whole, you know, uh, the, the, it's, it's not visual science anymore. Still, I'm a consultant. If someone asks me an Excel export, I will do it because, uh, and I can, uh, can sleep well. So, uh, and anything else, there are really, you can do anything. So web applications are applications in 2018, so you can do anything uh, you can imagine. Some disclaimers, so uh, I will have my PC presentation with Chris Martini, who is way smarter than me, and he likes everything, uh, he polishes everything, he likes beautiful things, well, I'm not. So uh, the, my, uh, my workbooks and dashboards are not so visually stunning, so most of them will be ugly, but you can still see how extensions are working. And I'm sure that two nights before our presentation, we will polish everything. So this is like a very hard working progress state, but I'm sure it will be enough to see like what are extensions and what are the different use cases. Okay, and let's jump, let's close this stuff and start with uh, something like my favorite dashboard, which is the Superstore. It always works. <laughs> so, after I open it, there are a few things. First of all, that I'm using uh, the famous 2018.2, uh, uh, because that's the only uh, version, I mean, that's, that's the newest version which has extensions in it. If you don't, um, privileged enough to have this version, then everything will be science fiction from here, and you have to wait until your future just gets you. However, if you are online, online is uh, always like versions ahead of uh, us, so, uh, so actually, online is running always in some beta software, so they have buttons already, which is great. Yeah. Uh, so in online, you are paying to test for us for using server, which is great. Now, let's see what this extension button does, so what, what, what it can do. Let me drag and drop it here, and now it asks me to choose an extension. Usually we are in trouble because we have no extensions, but that's not a problem. That's why we have this very nice extension gallery button. I'm gonna push it. And no surprise, it redirects me to, my, to the Tableau uh, dashboards extension portal, which is uh, not really entertaining at this phase, to be honest, because it has like a very limited number of extensions, but it will eventually grow. Uh, I already saw the newest version of this extension gallery, you can comment, you can upload your stuff, um, but right now it's still enough to uh, just call like the most reliable most useful extensions. Uh, so let me pick one, like randomly, something by my company. Oh, so, right, right? so, and it's you know in the center. Uh, everything is my reason. So let's just take this guy, and now I'm in a configuration screen. I have to configure my extension. Let me select a, uh, a sheet. Let's select uh, the dimension. What he's gonna do, I will tell you later. I'm <laughs> just doing the configuration. So let me pick some nice color, like the famous tableau blue. And after I resize, I have a nice brush filter here, so I can change the dates on my dashboard in a more visual, a more comfortable way. And this is like just one simple example uh, and like what extensions can do. So what is happening here? We have a nice uh, web page. It's like an HTML page embedded. It's a static page embedded into the dashboard. It can read the data from the sheets that I'm selecting. And if I change anything in my small web page embedded in the dashboard, it's accordingly change the filters on the dashboard. <coughs> it's so easy uh, to build and so easy to use. And as you can see, you can reuse it in uh, every place, uh, every places you want. Now, uh, and it's like a D3 very basic visualization. Let me show some other stuff with can be So, 
Uh, yeah, and just to compare, so this is what right now, if you are living in a pre-18.2 era, this is how date filtering looks like. And it's, uh, I'm changing and it's, it's cool, but it's cooler. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's uh, let's do something else. Let's close this guy and show something else. Um, have you ever asked by anyone to do a real-time dashboard which needs to be refreshed? This is like one of my oldest extension. I love it. All the looks. Actually, it was built by my colleague. But since I'm showcasing every time, everyone believes it's written by me. Uh, it's called like the auto refresh. And no surprise, it will automatically refresh the dashboard. So I just changed uh, the created by to his name because nobody thinks that uh, uh, it was real by not me. So here we can also have a, uh, a nice extension. And after a couple of seconds, it uh, refreshes uh, the dashboard. Like every every ten seconds, we can configure like what should be the interval. But again, all these extensions are working in desktop, but also working in server. So if you want to make something very uh, fancy, just buy some very cheap LCD screens, the biggest one that you get in Best Buy, put on the screen, have some auto refresh on it and show something uh, real time, uh, something meaningful, and it's also very easy to do so. Uh, dynamic parameter changes, that's also something which came up during, the, during the, the short break. So let me just quickly show how can you deal uh, with parameters in this new version and how extensions can interact with filters. So again, the use case is that in some cases people want to see like the freshest data uh, in their dashboard, like for the last last seven days. And for that, they don't feel like the, the relative date filter because the relative date filter works well uh, if you open the dashboard, but if you want to change the range, it's just not that easy. Actually, it's a uh, it's very painful for, to, uh, to do, do so. So everyone, I mean, but this was one of the most uh, requested feature uh, to add the ability to dynamically change a parameter value upon, upon the dashboard opening. It could be like an other filter or it could be like a date selection. So let me show uh, how it works. So this is my dynamic date, I will call this, this is the name of the parameter and it's a date and if I go back to here <coughs> let's just add the parameter to this dashboard it's here I can make it floating because yeah but it's another new feature uh, that was a wrong decision uh, now it's great so everyone can see it uh, let's add another extension here go to the gallery and get the date updater, which automatically updates your date parameter. This is exactly what we want. Update the date, uh, the date. Change the extension, and it's automatically recognized that I have a date filter, and I can say, set this like seven days ago. And now, if I open the dashboard, that will always uh, update it to that time. I can change it however I want, but if someone opens the dashboard again, which I can show you by reloading this component, it will change back to that date as well. So you can do, again, more dynamic, more interactive things. So this is, this is cool. And now uh, let me show something which is uh, done by the very famous Chris De Martini. He's unfortunately not with me, uh, but uh, he also shared some of uh, some from his work, what we will present during the TC. So actually this is his uh, family tree in a semionic uh, uh, framework, it's a visualization library. And here you can just visualize uh, hierarchies with an extension in a more, uh, more visual way. So right now in Tableau it's not that easy to visualize parent-child uh, relations. 
And it's not just visualizing the point-child relations. You can make it look like, like it, it was brushed with a, with a pencil, which makes it absolutely amazing. It's, it's a totally uh, useless feature. <laughs> but it, I think this is just, this is just very nice. Uh, wait, so this, uh, you can, well, I mean, this looks ultimately ugly. We didn't spend time with the configuration skip, uh, uh, screen, but you can you know, select what kind of visualization, what you want, uh, and uh, how, how do you want to you know, visualize your hierarchies. And uh, you can add like, where it has to get the data, what is the foreign dimension? What is the child dimension? So it's very easy to set it up. What should be the color, the value? <laughs> this is not done yet, but I can change it to normal, but normal is boring, like it's a normal uh, visualization. Nobody wants normal. I want something artsy. So let's use instead of sketchy, something painty. And now it's like painted like water paint. Uh, however, this is not, not the, not, the, what is interesting is not how it looks, it, uh, it's like how easy to make something uh, like a visualization and move it from outside of the world, integrate it and customize it uh, as long as, uh, as deep as you want. So let's see what else do we have. So from visualization perspective, I think we are, we are good. Let's check another use case, which is the write back. Uh, where we are, where we need to have more integration with other systems. So let me log on to one of our Tableau servers. And, uh, so what's going on here? We have uh, a nice chart, and uh, I can pick one point here. And just inside my Tableau server, I can annotate that point, change its value uh, with secure and integrated way. I can make a comment that this is my favorite point. Why? Because it is. And uh, if I'm lucky enough, and usually I am, it's uh, written back into the database where the data is coming from. So it's not just uh, Go writing into a cache, it's going to a underlying database like any SQL server, Postgres, Terra data, depending on your infrastructure, and writes the data back into that database using some uh, middleware ser uh, web services. So this could be like an ERP, this could be like a CRM, this could be like a ticketing system. You want to uh, raise a ticket uh, just from your dashboard uh, because the data is inaccurate, and uh, you already annotated that this data is not reliable, and at the same time you've already made um, a notification to the support team who can start investigating the issue. So it can uh, not just help from a normal perspective, it's uh, also very great from for, for governance purposes. So I just love uh, this. And why we are I'm here, let me show my very ugly Sankey, Sankey demo. This was the very first, uh, it is never released, but uh, that's Austria. You can also download already like at least two Sankey diagram extensions from the gallery. And this is like a very good visualization, uh, like, you know, who is buying uh, uh, like Aus Austria or Australia? It's Australia it's, uh, where, where uh, it buys different goods like arms. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, in, in the past, you can, so in Tableau you can do anything. So there are like tons of uh, tutorials on the internet. And one of the biggest thing in Tableau is its community. So in the past you were able to create Sankeys. It was like this, type of, I mean, a blog post like this, and you have to go on these 30 points to make sure that at the end of the day you have a Sankey. Now you have a Sankey, but you just drag and drop something from someone else, which is like unbelievably easy. All right, uh, Tableau Tracker, which is also our very nice uh, extension, which also shows um, 
the capability of uh, of understanding user behavior in the like how people are interacting with the dashboard. So I have a client who, um, I, yeah, uh, he's a business manager or some sort of like that, and he's always like, who is using our dashboards? What they are doing? What they are filtering? Where are they are clicking? Aren't they just opening and closing immediately? And well, uh, we can answer these questions uh, by, you know, parting some of the toggle server blocks, but that's not really complete. But uh, we built an extension which tracks every interaction inside the dashboard. So in the Tableau extension, the Tableau extension can capture if you click, if you change a filter, uh, also the filter values, and we can just summarize this data and see, like, who is the one who is looking for his manager's salary? And uh, <laughs> also, uh, it's not that good in, in this use case, but in sometimes from compliance perspective, you have to know like who is looking for what. Uh, in, and in like 99% of the use cases, it's just human curiosity. Like, am I a good dashboard designer? Is my new filter makes people happy? <laughs> and uh, and these are just natural feeling and. Fortunately, now with extension, we have a way to answer these uh, very personal questions. Uh, I don't really go into uh, details. Uh, There's the website where you can just, you know, uh, it's, it's described what are the steps. Uh, it's relatively boring to see, but at the end of the day, you can see like uh, what people are doing, what is the bounce rate, how many clicks they are doing, what do they change. So it's, uh, it's pretty useful for uh, people who wants to know everything. Now, a couple of things about security. Uh, so, when I drag something to my uh, to a dashboard, uh, let's say Superstore, check something new, maybe uh, crack, Cracks Exportal, which is definitely one of the best extension. Uh, it creates an Excel export, not with the crosstop, but uh, it's a real Excel export. And whenever you load an extension, this dialog comes up, which says in a very friendly way that actually it doesn't require full data access, but this is this extension can just take all of your data, uh, just a summary, in this case not the full data, but the aggregated data, it can take that aggregated data, send it to an internet, sell it on the black web, without you know, <laughs> having any clue behind. And this is like something what I'm sure Tableau is really working on, and I can show like how in the server where it looks like, but in desktop, that's the only warning what the user gets. So again, every extension, access all of your data and you have practically zero idea what is going on behind the scenes. So please do not download any extensions from the internet. Maybe you can download from us because we are very trustful, you know, the guys from Eastern Europe. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, but we are a double gallery, so it's nice. Uh, so yes, there are some very uh, serious uh, security concerns behind extensions because these are web applications. So normally, the way how it should work is that only uh, those extensions should be used what the administrators allows. Right now in desktop, there is no way to specify what people can use. It's uh, by default, it's turned on. There is no official way to turn it off. So by default, every user who is like the one uh, what, you know, my mother, she always believes that when she click on banners, she can get free stuff. And, uh, and that's how the society works. So I'm sure that you will have also some uh, business users who wants to click on some extensions because it looks great, but actually it steals your data. And you as an administrator have not too many um, control over it. So what can you do in a... Uh, uh, here in desktop, you can cancel and allow what administrators can do. I will show it later. But on the server, you have a little bit more control. 
you can specify how it uh, should look like. Let me go to top level line uh, just to experience the future. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the settings, which is uh, here, there is a specific uh, section for extension security where you can, you know, uh, enable extensions or disable some the server at all. I'm sure that uh, not many uh, large Fortune 500 companies uh, company will allow this actually. And the default behavior for extensions, uh, you should never ever enable unknown extensions to run on the server. So it needs to be governed if you want to have an extension like uh, something which is really makes sense then the administrators can uh, edit here and uh, decide if we want to you know, hide and show the warning message about the security and should we allow or disable the full data access. Full data access means like the, uh, not just the summary data but the uh, underlying data itself. If uh, in this case if the dashboard is allowed when you open it, it will not really uh, give you any any warning, and you can definitely start using it. Otherwise, it will show uh, an error message, and if you disable it completely, it will just not show up. So here, as you see, there was no warning message because I added as a trusted extension, and this is like uh, the way how it should work. If I'm going back to the settings and uh, disable. Uh, this uh, delete this record so I don't make it as a as a specific enabled extension that you we will have uh, a warning message and it also asks us to allow or deny it but the best is again to turn off the unknown extensions which is this is not the default. On the default is enable unknown, but after installation, you just go there and being a very security-minded people, you just turn it off. I'm just checking if it disappears or not. Ah, yes. Okay. <laughs> so this is how it, how it works. On. Uh, is there any server administrator here? I mean, am I, do I have to just skip this part? I will not. <laughs> <laughs> so, a couple of things also. So, again, having said that Tableau has um, uh, a web, uh, web altering first uh, concept, every extension related activity like adding an extension to a, a, a dashboard is also available from uh, from here from uh, from server online so if I switch to edit mode I can quickly change things like replace my brush filter and add like an Excel export, just to show that as well. Let me allow it. It redirects me to the configuration section. I hope it's gonna work. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I can select what sheets needs to be in an export. I can select uh, uh, columns, I can add options, like how should be the button named, but if everything is okay, then I can just close this. Can I? I hope so. So if I press this button, let me just, let me try to save this and See if we have an Excel export or not. Mm. 
press the button, have a nice Excel, and this nice <laughs> Excel exporter, what I just downloaded from the IT internet, allows me to access the data in a, in a not that nice way. So the problem with this is that right now extensions can only access uh, the underlying data and the summary data, but not the cross-top data. And everybody wants the cross-top data. So we also built a solution uh, which can download the cross-top data as well, and we are going to present it on, in our presentation as well. And actually there we might even explain how we did that. And it's a little bit too technical here, so just let me show that one, uh, how that works. Uh, the famous uh, download, and it, the way what we, uh, what we find out, it also works on previous versions of Tableau, so you don't have to wait until 18.2. If I press here, and I'm lucky enough, now I have another Excel file with a cross-step format, which is more closer to the, to the format of what people accept, uh, expect. And also, since we control the Excel writing, we can add some uh, very standard, common branding, uh, like a very nice company company logo and the company font, what we paid millions for our PR company. We can use that here directly, and everybody is going to be happy. Last thing, I get, I think, uh, what I just wanted to show. So this is the configuration. Never enable. Uh, uh, unknown extensions because uh, people like not me but evil guys can steal your data and in double uh, desktop there is an undocumented feature or an undocumented registry setting where which can disable the extensions from Tableau desktop so if you are unsure that you want to have the uh, extension support or not because you just cannot really control uh, your users download then uh, with this uh, OS X uh, default setting or this registry key you can entirely disable the function actually you can hide uh, the, uh, the button as well let me try that out if it's easy or not so uh, So now if I can start my desktop and I open the Superstore, now the extension button just completely disappear, which is nice. Uh, and I hope that Tableau in one day, and I'm not, I, I personally know that they are working hard on this one. They can make it more easier to control the extension features. So. Uh, and it's gonna be a little bit, you know, angry because I was too fast today, uh, leaving too much time for networking and questions. But uh, I hope I did uh, show. I mean, I, I was able to give you like an overview what our extensions and how it can form our Tableau future by having custom visualizations and. Uh, also, if you are like maps and spatial analytics, then uh, this DC conference on that one stage, Mapbox and Tableau will have a very good and great uh, announcement. So be there because it's also related to extensions and it can also add tons of new capabilities to, uh, to this Tableau world through very new way of mapping. So thank you for being here and that's the part and I have to ask if anyone has questions because ah, let me let me check the thank you slide. Yeah, that's the time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I you know learned. Yeah, resources, so these are things what you can find on Google first page. But just to wrap up, I had to write something. Uh, and now the 
famous question slide. Yes, sorry. Uh, yeah. So everything is on developer.tableau.com, which is probably the most uh, under-visited website in Tableau world, but actually it's very well uh, maintained and you can find everything about the different Tableau APIs, like JavaScript API, extension API, uh, and the others. Yeah. I choose the smallest fonts so what I could find on my computer. <laughs> the uh, you mentioned the uh, you know there's really not much security around the extensions uh, in some cases. The uh, is there going to be so, uh, is Tableau going to do some sort of certification so that only those you know here are the ones that uh, that we know are from valid authors. Uh, so I can't speak. really speak about Tableau. I mean, you know, when you have a discussion with someone who is working for Tableau, you have something and they don't answer. And I, I'm the same. Yes, they are aware of the problem. Yes, they are working on it, but uh, no, no specific timelines. This, I mean, she's a server of me, so. <laughs> so, my question kind of goes to that. Um, we haven't tested extensions yet because we need to know about the security of an extension before we use it. Is there any way for us to know other than writing it ourselves? And are these just being written with just standard Tableau APIs? It's just a standard Tableau API, but still if you're getting something from outside, you have to check its code or at least try it in a sandbox to, to make sure that it's not communicating to any other websites. Or when we download it, is it just, um, it's HTML and JavaScript. Oh, it's just JavaScript. Just JavaScript. Okay. So everything is uh, visible. Okay, great. So have you heard what they, when you were looking over there, and I've been working with the extension with you guys myself, um, one of the things that they talked about at the last consumer group was the Python extension. They were working on the API for that. I wasn't sure if it was going to be through extension. I was wondering if you guys have seen any new extensions in data that you The only Python-related uh, API is the external server, where you can actually execute Python code directly from the from the Tableau server, uh, Tableau desktop, and Tableau server. Similar way, like you can ex uh, execute R code. And uh, yeah, so the thing is that Borobi was the guy who developed that uh, project and he left the company and it took some time to find someone by Tableau who can continue the work. And now they hired someone and she started to work. So the Python API, the Python external service API where you can add Python calculations to the system will be um, developed further. So right now it's totally in a useless state because uh, the way how it works right now that you have a Python service running and they just left the user and password authentication, which means that right now everyone in your organization can run any code on your uh, dev Pi server. Makes it, yeah, so they are trying, they are working on that, but right now it's completely useless. I mean, it's not completely, but. <laughs> We had 18.2, we went to download the brush filter extension. Is that, that's not secure? I mean, it's a question. So I'm, it's secure as long as you trust me. Assuming we trust you. Yes, it is. So the only, the only security problem is that um, I am as an extension developer, I'm having a code which is running on your system. So every extension what we build is open source, so you can download it and run it on your environment and go through an audit. Or you can just be lazy, download it and use it as it is. But this is not unsecure by its nature. It, the only security concern that I can execute things because I'm hosting the extension in my web server and that web server has the code which is executed by the Tableau, uh, Tableau desktop server. 
access is more like a trust issue. But by extensions are secure, so they cannot access data on your computer, they cannot really uh, do harmful things. They do what is inside the code, and the code can call external web services. So practically, um, a malform, not malform, but an evil, uh, really carefully prepared extension can act like a nice visualization, but in the meanwhile, every hour it sends out uh, your, your company data to an external website. And you will not realize it because it looks very nice. Like, you know, the jumping cat on the bar charts, it's very cute, but maybe it's uh, stealing your so social security numbers. It's, uh, no, I, I wouldn't <laughs> say that. So, like uh, what I mentioned, so certifying uh, the extensions is one way to do it. So, if Tumble do the audits and they digitally sign extensions uh, and saying that these are good because we just stand and it's everything is certified, you are good to go. Or if your own developers, um, you, you're doing by yourself, or you are auditing your things and hosting internally, it's also safe. It's like Everything else. If you some, if you load some program from the internet, you just have to make sure that it's from trusted source. And since digital signature is missing from the API right now, you just don't know if it's tampered or not. Would I use it? I would definitely use extensions, but I'm not running a, a Fortune 500 company as of now. But I have very ambitious plans. So it's a, yeah, it, it's a tough thing, but uh, there is a very uh, big momentum behind extensions. And as you see also with the Pepine, the Python integration, Tableau really drives new security related, uh, enterprise security based uh, uh, features in a very short amount of time. So they are cool. Thank you. Do you have any experience on uh, extension performance on Tableau Public? No, the good thing that it runs on your server. Um, I don't even know if it works on public or not. Okay. If it works on online and server, I never trust on public. I, I mean, usually people are using public to, uh, you know, to publish beautiful things. I have no beautiful things, so there is no reason to use public, public for myself. And uh, again, I'm a soldier, so I make money from others. Uh, and public is like doing for free, which is totally not my, you know, <laughs> my way of doing things. Uh, but performance, so the extensions are running on your on your web browser, on, on your desktop, not on the server. So in this perspective, if you change a filter, from uh, on Tableau server there is no huge performance difference if it's coming from a human being changing a filter or uh, a filter changed by extensions. And all the rendering, all the fancy stuff is happening at the client side and not on the server side. Which also has another interesting uh, aspect, and what I forgot to say, that did you run ever into the situation when you have some HTML formatted uh, frame inside dashboard and you try to create a PDF export and, or a PNG and it wasn't there? Now extensions will do the same. Uh, so right now you cannot export extensions into PDF or into a picture image format because it will execute obviously a code on the server side which is also unsecure. So it looks nice when you are doing interactive analysis but you cannot make an offline copy from extension based visualizations at least right now. And those same key pictures on my wall? You have to use your phone. <laughs> or, or yes, yeah, so you can create a screenshot. That's what everyone does, right? <laughs> so. All right. Any other questions, or we can go to drink. You know, you can find me if you have any questions after the talk. The last one. Yeah, the Dow Jones is up 275 points today. How much does that do here? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Andy, you, yeah, I, yeah, I, I will also send the presentations to you. You can distribute the across the group. I mean, it's uh, actually it's on the slides.com. So since I'm not paying for the service, it's available for everyone. Uh, again, I'm, I'm a cheap guy. I don't pay services, but I 
Adobe, so it's available for everyone. Uh, and I'm going to send it. And really, again, I really apologize that uh, I use the most ugliest, uh, but cheap and free uh, presentation tool for this very prestigious event, which is I just learned today that this is the oldest user group yeah. in the world's history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the second in the world. Yeah, but you're not the first in the world. With the, uh, the folks in London. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so we've, been, we've been running longer though. They, they yeah. had some time off for a while. So all together you are still number one. So we're number one. <laughs> That's good. Thank you again. Thank you.